Um, thanks all for coming, what a lot of you. Um, I'm here to talk to you about a thing I've done called DGIT, which um, was the result of mostly a session that we had at um, DevCon 13. Um, Joey and I and a bunch of other people sat around a table and scrawled a hideous diagram on a piece of cardboard. Um, and then we threw almost all the diagram away. <laughs> Okay, so the Debian Archive is, amongst other things, a version control system. Uh, you can clone things by doing app get source, or check out if you're a bit retro, if you like to think of it like that way. And um, when you upload, that's like doing a commit or a push, or maybe both together. Um, but the Archive is actually quite a bad version control system. It doesn't have sensible branching, its history browsing is terrible. Um, it's interaction with other VCSs, there's a lot of tools that have been written, but it's still pretty bad. Um, and many of us want to be using Git. Now, I know some people don't want to be using Git. Uh, that's fine. Um, you can carry on doing whatever it was you were doing before, and hopefully you won't notice too much. So, um, for the rest of you, I'm just going to from now on assume that you like Git, or at least can bear to live with it because, well, yeah, let's not go there, shall we? Um, so, um, what to do about this problem? Well, we could, we could replace the archive. Um, we could replace the archive with a Git server or something like that, but, but the archive is uh, lots of other things besides being an appallingly bad VCS, um, and replacing all of those other things, um, well, that would get quite complicated. Um, and, of course, a lot of our co-developers have been using the archive for a long time, and like um, many people, they fear and hate change. I fear and hate change too when it's not the change that I'm hoping for. Um, so, you know, we, we should, we should do, deal with this the, the way that we're used to dealing with these kind of problems um, and write some software. Um, so what we really need is a better gateway between the archive and Git. And that's what dgit is. So dgit is a tool which lets you treat the archive a bit as if it were a Git server. Um, and it provides the same uniform operation for all packages in the archive, regardless of the maintainer's workflow, um, regardless of the source control arrangements used by that team. Um, you can clone absolutely any package, work on it, build it, test it, and upload it. You don't need to know the maintainer's workflow. It doesn't matter whether the maintainer is already using dgit, or using some other set of Git tools, or using Quilt, or CVS, or if they're keeping their Debian patches in SCCS, or God knows what. So you do all the source code management directly in Git, and you don't ever need to interact with the archive directly. You just use these uh, dgit commands here. Um, so now I have a demo. Um, and this demo gives me instructions, which is good. Let me just... Um, can't quite see what I'm typing. I'll just. Oh. Is that big enough? This is huge. I can't make it any bigger. <laughs> Maybe I should be using GNOME Terminal or something. I'm not sure I have that installed. <laughs> hmm? <coughs> Let, let's not do that now. I'm just cloning this here, and right, there we go. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Ooh, that was not what I meant. Um, oh, right, yes, I'm supposed to edit it. Time to complete that. So there we go. Um, I've edited the change log. We'll commit it. Very good. And oh, I need to build it. Yes, of course. Right, this will take a little while, so I'll just leave that <laughs> running. Um, 
So DGIT is particularly useful for NMUers because you can prepare an RC bug fix or a security fix or whatever you like um, with full support from Git, um, and you don't need to know anything about the package's usual VCS arrangements. Um, if the package's clean target is broken, you don't care about that because you would use Git clean. Um, you can clearly see all the usual things. You can cherry pick changes directly from the upstream tree. Um, all the usual things that you would hope you'd be able to do. Um, DGIT also has good potential for downstreams, so that is uh, derivatives, um, users who want to modify a package. Um, having used DGIT clone or fetch, you can merge um, whatever has been made in the Debian archive into your downstream branch, and you just get the right, the right output. Um, unfortunately, there are some issues with this for non-DDs at the moment, which I'm going to discuss later. Jolly good. Right, at this point, I need to do a top secret thing with my PGP key. <laughs> Good. Well, I said it's top secret. I'm not explaining why. Okay, and then I said. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's, it has to think a bit because it needs to check that every every all the ducks are lined up in in a row. It needs to check that the that we're actually doing what we think of as a fast forward. That is, that the version we're uploading is actually contains all the changes that are in the um, archives Git repository. Of course, the archive doesn't have a Git repository, but, but we'll get on to how that works. There we go. Um, nice and simple. I didn't have to do any, any dev sign, any, I didn't have to do anything that wasn't Git. Uh, I did have to do an S build. Um, we have some ideas on how to do. Um, source package less uploads. Um, of course, they won't really be source package less. They'll be um, ducks um, paddling very quickly in the background to make you a source package. But in principle, I think this can be done um, without you having, actually having to notice that there's a source package. Right. So that was the demo. Uh, now I need to just undo that. Very good. Okay. Um, so, as a maintainer, you can choose to use dgit if you like, um, and you can choose to use the git history that you provide that dgit looks at as your primary git history, or um, or you can not do so. If you do so, then you can use dgit to upload your package in the usual way. Um, if you have some other different git history, um, then you may or may not be able to use dgit to work with it. Um, dgit's requirements are that your git history is a patches applied fast forwarding git history and that the tree that you get out of dbigotsource-x is identical to the tree in your git repository. Um, and um, so, in particular, you can use dgit if you have the complete upstream history in your git history. So, I'm going to go on to principles of operation now. Oh dear, this is quite small, isn't it? Uh, well, we'll just have to live with that, I'm afraid. Um, get the slides up on your laptop. If you, you, they're linked to from the, uh, from the talk page. Um, so yes, uh, obviously you want to know how all this works. Um, so I'm going to run through the principles of operation. Um, the key thing is the data model. The DSC, you, you've got an example there of a DSC from the dget package itself, itself, and it has a field in it, dget, and that refers to a git hash, and that hash is the commit that was uploaded, um, or pushed, if you'd like to talk about it like that. Um, and as I say, that specifies a commit whose tree, whose git tree, is identical to the results of unpacking the DSC. So the DSC and the git tree are just different representations of the same data. 
Um, but the actual Git history isn't stored on the archive. Uh, there are various problems with that. Um, I don't need to go into the, the, the history there. Um, there are some real problems with storing the Git history in the archive. The archive isn't really set up to be a, a good Git server. Um, so instead, um, it's obtained via the Git protocol from a special dgit Git server that contains all the dgit Git histories. Currently, this is on an alley off, um, but there are a number of reasons why that's not good and it's going to move. Uh, I've been promised a VM of my own. Um, yes, so the other constraint is that the successive uploads in a particular suite have to have a fast forwarding Git history compared to each other. So that is, every upload must have merged into it somehow the Git version of the previous upload. Um, so if the previous upload was done with dgit, then that has to be a, a successor of the, the, the dgit commit mentioned there. Um, otherwise, it has to be the merge of the, the sort of um, gateway git history that I'm going to mention in a moment. Um, right, yes. I'll go on to that in a moment. Um, but also I need to expand a bit on the need for the git commit to be identical to the source package. So dgit is a way, amongst other things, of looking at source packages and their history using git. Um, and that means it has to be obviously the same as the package tree. Um, files like configure, which turns out to be a contentious example, need to either be in the git history and the source package, or they must be in neither, because the source package and the dgit git history are the same. Uh, or to put it another way, what you think of as the source code shouldn't depend on whether you're representing that source code as a Debian source package or as a git history. Now, people have different views about whether configure should be in tarballs or whether it should be in git repositories. Um, all that dgit requires um, if you are using it, is that either configure is in neither or it's in both. So if you don't like um, configure in Git, then you have to have it not in your source package. And presumably your source package has some other arrangements for, for building things. Just a very quick question. Uh, you sure. said that this fast forwarding requirement exists. Uh, yes. Does this, what, what, you gave the technical explanation, but uh, what are the consequences for the maintainer of a package who uses dgit, for the maintainer of a package who doesn't use dgit, and for the NMUer? Right. So, um, for, the main t for anybody who doesn't use dgit, they don't notice that anybody else is using dgit apart from there are some you know, automatically generated patch file names and things like that. But, but in general, um, people who don't use dgit don't need to be aware that it exists. Uh, if you are a dgit user, then so if you're an NMUer, this requirement will pretty much be automatically satisfied because you will dgit clone the package and that will produce you the git history that you'll be working on. You'll make your commits on top of that and naturally the result will be fast forward. If you're the maintainer, um, particularly if you're starting to use dgit for the first time, you will find that you have to merge, you have to explicitly merge in dgit's idea of the history into whatever your current idea of the history is. Um, that merge doesn't have to be a, it doesn't have to change your actual tree. Um, you can do git merge dash s hours to say, I, I declare that this thing is somehow an ancestor, uh, a descendant of the, of the other. Um, uh, and then dgit will be happy that what you're doing is intentionally superseding. Does that answer the question? Uh, okay, so I mentioned configure. So there's um, what to do about non-dgit uploads, like most of the archive at the moment. So here we have an example. Uh, that's really quite blurry. And I should have used a bigger font for this, but then it wouldn't have fitted. Um, uh, where was I? Yes. Um, so non-dgit uploads don't have a commit hash in the DSC. Um, 
but dgit clone needs to produce a suitable git commit. Um, so what it does is it invents, currently in a deterministic way, a commit that corresponds to the package it got from the archive. So when you say dgit clone or dgit fetch, you always get the authoritative state actually from the archive. Um, it's just that sometimes you will get some real git history if somebody may use dgit for the last push, and otherwise you will get a kind of synthetic history that looks a bit like this um, you see on the bottom of the slide here. Um, this is just a, an example package. Um, here you see um, this is a package where somebody used dgit to upload um, 180-1, and then later, um, for whatever reason, the next upload was not done with dgit. And if you do dgit fetch, dgit has synthesized these two commits, one of which contains the actual code, and the other of which is this merge, which just says, we found this package like this in this suite. If you have a longer history, that will appear somewhere in there. Um, okay. So, Diga's biggest problem at the moment is with Quilt 3.0 packages. So there's a few difficulties there. Um, at the moment, dgit doesn't do anything very clever with them. There is a requirement that you must be able to deep exhaust-x the .dsc that it generates and get the same thing as in the git tree. And this means that the git tree must be in a sort of deep exhaust committed state. So dgit, when you push, will run deep exhaust commit for you um, and generate a patch containing the changes that you made with git. It's not able at the moment to split that up into multiple quilt patches or, or anything really very sophisticated. You just get an automatically generated, single automatically generated patch. Um, and likewise, when you dgit clone a quilt package, you don't get a git history that looks like the quilt patch stack. You just get a single, essentially a single commit that was generated by importing the, the, the actual tree that was produced. So together, these things mean that when you work on a quilty package in dgit, you don't interact with the quilt patch stack at all. Um, to people who are using the archive other than via dgit, um, it looks like you were a completely naive maintainer who didn't know anything about Quilt. <coughs> now, you know, notionally our processes um, support this. This is supposed to be a permitted thing to do if you're doing an NMU, but in practice, um, I have had some grumbling from people about things like this. Uh, the, 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 the maintainer of this particular package, um, they said, well, you know, yes, okay, thank you very much for your change, but it would have been much better if you'd produced this in a form that was more easily, you know, didn't require any further massaging to fit into their own existing quilt stack. Um, I do intend to improve this, perhaps by having dgit use some kind of tool as a bidirectional gateway between quilt stacks in source packages and git branches. Um, but exactly how to do this involves some very complicated design decisions which I'm nowhere near having worked out. And every time I have a conversation with somebody about this, it seems that they have a different workflow and a different idea of what the git history should contain and a different idea of what the various trees should contain. And most of these ideas are incompatible. Um, this is obviously no good because the whole point of dgit is that you should be able to use dgit without understanding what the maintainer's chosen patch strategy workflow is. You should just be able to commit, at the very least, you should be able to just commit changes on the top without understanding their um, branch structure or, or in, their, in their native <coughs> git repository or whatever. Um, I, I think this can be improved. Um, exactly which of the current Gitish patch management workflows 
can be supported or at least can be made compatible with DGIT is a bit of an open question. And I'm happy to talk to people about that really afterwards is probably best, um, particularly if you have some strong opinions about it. Um, but, so probably the biggest problem with DGIT right now is this. Um, it, it's really, at the moment, only useful for DDs. <coughs> I, I'm finding this particularly galling for a tool which is most, you know, which is especially useful for um, users and downstreams, mentees, <coughs> people like that, to have it accessible only to DDs who are much less in need of, of this kind of support. Um, it's, it's quite unfortunate. Um, so there are two really big obstacles to widening this access. One is related to the archive, and one is related to the Git server. Um, so DGIT needs to query the archive to find the DSC, the current version of the DSC that's in the suite. Uh, we've got a question from Colin? Uh, I mentioned this to, to somebody earlier, and they suggested uh, using UDD for this, UDD.devintodorg. Um, is that something you looked at? Yes. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have quite the right data quite quickly enough. Okay. Um, Thanks. So... Hmm? Uh, not offhand. This was a long time ago. It was like six months ago. Um, So, at the moment, there's not really an official interface for providing this. The, the UDD doesn't provide, I think, the, all of the fields that I get out of that select. Um, I also have experienced some weird SKU problems. Does UDD access the project B directly? He says it gets synced on a mirror push. Um, well, that's that's too slow, sadly, um, because um, if it if you you need the actual access to the project B um, to minimise the period of time during which you might accidentally upload something that to DGIT would look like a fast forward, but was actually squashing a previous upload. So what you might actually want to do is uh, fix that a little bit to expose this information via metadata FTP master Debian org. Right, indeed. So uh, I'm coming on to that. Um, so um, at the moment you can see what I do here. Maybe at least, at least the people in the front can see. I'm doing some hideous thing where we escher to mirror.ftp master and run a, a, a piece of SQL. Um, but FTP master have promised me a proper, supported, secure data query service that will allow me to, that will answer these kind of questions. I understand this would also be useful for some other users of the FTP master database mirror. Um, I think maybe contributors Debian net could, could Debian or could usefully use such a service as well. Um, so when that's fixed, obviously I will change DGIT and it will access this service. And then um, where you see in the table there, needs project B data service, those problems will be fixed. And that will allow at least DMs to fetch, but not yet to push. Um, the other problem is that DGIT is using um, Alioth as its Git server, and the... Uh, sorry, what's Project B? That's, Project B is the database um, that DAC uses. That is the main Debian archive has a database that records what packages are where and which suites they're in and what versions they are and what files they're made up out of. And that's all stored in this database called Project B. Project Betsy for reasons lost in this Project Betsy, I'm told, for reasons lost in the midst of time, says Colin. Uh, yes, well, who knows. Um, so, right, I was on to the Git server. Um, so, yeah, um, at the moment we're doing, we, we've got uh, an area in Collapmate um, where these 
Git repositories live. Uh, this is not ideal for a number of reasons. Alioth does lots and lots of other very exciting things and is much less secure than it needs to be. Um, really, we want a Git server that's about as secure as the archive, and that's certainly not Alioth. So um, DSA have promised me a VM, um, which will will move everything to. Yes, we've got a question here. Um, a DSA have approached me uh, in the hat asking uh, if there's a way to require DMs to have a user ID so they can enter them in LDAP and uh, allow people with DM to log in into that machine. And uh, I'm, I, I think it's doable, and uh, I'm working on implementing this, although I cannot talk about, uh, I cannot guarantee a timeline for it. Excellent. That's very helpful. Right. So um, what we're talking there is, so when we move to this new uh, Git server, um, there will be, let me explain and then I'll take the question. Um, so I already have code that um, will receive a Git push from the server end and rather than doing the access control by, um, by username, it will do the access control by signed, Git signed tags. Uh, this is a bit complicated because Git verify tag doesn't verify all of the tag. Um, but I've managed to work around all that and I have a, a, an implementation pretty much ready to go. Um, the other thing that I want to be able to do is to allow you to push to arbitrary, more or less arbitrary branches in the dgit server, uh, provided you have the relevant kind of access. And for that, we need um, all DMs to have accounts in LDAP. Um, so this work for getting DMs LDAP accounts um, is a necessary component for getting DMs full access to dgit. Um, moving dgit to its own git server will, that and the FTP master data service will provide anonymous access, but obviously only anonymous read-only access. Uh, right, I'm just going to go on to my next slide now, which has got the references on it, because this is more or less what I prepared to say. Um, and maybe we should go right on to the questions, since I see there are quite a few. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you were obviously first. Yeah, um, so it seems to me that the contents of the Git server should be able to be verified on, uh, by anyone who downloads them. So the security, that, that Git tag verifying thing that you mentioned seems important, but the final place that the data goes after the tag is verified doesn't seem that important. Do you sort of see what I mean? Like I do see what you mean, but I think you're wrong. Uh, so this is what dget does. Uh, D, if you run dget, it verifies the signature on the DSC. Um, this, I don't think this is the correct approach because um, the, the DSC doesn't tell you, for example, which suite the package is in, um, which is important information. Um, maybe it was in experimental and um, it's really important to know whether this thing that you're getting was in experimental or stable proposed updates. Uh, <laughs> also, um, it can fail the other way, which is um, that if your key, if, if you're downloading some package and the maintainer who uploaded that has changed their key since, or they've become emeritus, or some other thing has happened, then the verification will fail when in fact the package is fine. So. Um, I want this to have essentially the same security properties as AppGet does, which means that it needs to rely on the archives view of the world, not individual verification of the, the original source code. That's not to say that, that those sign tags and things aren't there if you want to do some kind of audit or monitoring or something, but they're not the primary security mechanism. That makes sense. There is an alternative, which is that you could have the archive generate commit IDs that people should trust, and that just shows up synchronized out to the FTP, the mirrors, and so on. And that's an artifact you get via apt-get something. 
uh, that's that's basically that's basically what's happening, right? So if we go back, this DSC file um, that comes from the archive. The SHA two five six sum of that DSC file is in the project B. When we have a new FTP master data service, and indeed at the moment with the SSH SQL rune, you SSH to the FTP master database, you get the hash of that file, you download the, the, the file comes from some mirror, and you, you know, the mirror might produce a corrupted version, but DGIT will detect that, and so you do have a chain of trust back to the FTP master database. Right, in which case it seems like you don't need to trust the Git. You're, you're talking over the person with a microphone, so I can't hear him and nobody can hear you. Uh. Uh, it seems like if you have that, you don't necessarily need to trust the Git archive then, but I'll like yield to other questions. Uh, Joey is saying um, that this is in the sources file and therefore you don't have to um, you don't have to use apt. But of course, if you just want to dgit clone a particular package, uh, you know, you say dgit clone blah sid and you're on stable. The last thing you want is for that to involve downloading SID's sources file. Uh, could you go back to the, the, the table you had in the last two? Sure. Uh, one last slide. Uh, I don't believe anonymous is not desirable. I believe anonymous it should, push. It, it should be something like git format patch. That would be awesome. Like, you know, dig git format patch sends the thing to the BTS. Uh, Yes, that is desirable, um, and the, the command you're looking for is called git format patch. <laughs> <laughs> is there a format patch? You, you do git format patch. Um, your maintainer, sponsor, whoever it is, will do git am and dgit push, and it, it will all do the right thing. Will the same work with Garrett? So, so the, the, the problem that we had with the 3.0 Git uh, Debian format was that it would contain, potentially contain commit, transi commits in the middle of history that contained uh, things that we didn't want to distribute or that were under various licenses we didn't like, which was the, in that all that stuff would have to be reviewed. Um, this is pretty close to using Git as the packaging format, except that we're storing it into a different archive. Up until the point when only DDs and DMs had access to the actual Git archive, I understood how you were getting around that problem. Now that we're talking about opening this up for anonymous access, I don't understand why we're not back to that same problem, where, the pet, where, the, where Debian is distributing files which are potentially under licenses that we can't, that don't let us actually distribute them. Right. Um, so. The, 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 the short answer to that is that we are already distributing all of that kind of stuff. We're doing so from Alioth. And this is no worse than Alioth. In fact, it's just like Alioth, only it's more secure. Um, the problem with Git history in the archive is a, there's, a, there's a contested conversation about that. And it turns out that in order to do this, um, I don't need to change anybody's mind about the desirability of, you know, having the full Git history available to <coughs> people from a Debian machine. We've already crossed that bridge with Alioth, so I don't think we're making this any worse. Now, there is, of course, a potential practical difficulty that if some package's Git history turned out to have unredistributable stuff in it or illegal stuff or what have you and that, that actually you, you, we noticed or somebody sent us a lawyer letter or something um, and our response to that would be to use administrative access to the Git server to wipe out the history and probably have some kind of commit object blacklist or something to stop it from coming back. Uh, this has not yet happened to Alioth and given the amount of stuff from just about anywhere that appears on Alioth I think you know, and I, I've not heard of, of, of similar problems being a, a big difficulty for other projects. So I think in practice, um, we can afford to cross that bridge when we come to it. We do have a plan for when that happens, but we haven't written the tooling to do it in a really nice way. One other really quick question. The, um, you said that the, when you push to dgit, it has to be a fast forward from the previous upload to the archive. What happens when 
you want to branch the package for stable updates. Or or backports is another example. Because right, uh, those would seem to you would seem to then need multiple branches in DGit, and they wouldn't necessarily be fast forwards of. So each each suite. Um, do you know what a suite is? A suite is something like squeeze. But each suite is its own branch already. Each each, each suite is its own branch, and those branches are in themselves fast forwarding. Okay. More questions. I've got a question. Uh, I am sorry. Uh, so I'm not a Debian developer, but that's not interesting for the purpose of my question, which is I'd like to use DGIT in a non-Debian context. Are there so I've got source packages that I'm importing from Debian and patching locally, and right now I'm checking in DSCs to subversion, which is miserable. Uh, and I find DGIT compelling, and I want to know if you think it is easy for me to set up an instance of DGIT pointed at a local Git repository. Uh, to import DSCs from random places. Right. So, if what you're trying to do, so there, there's sort of like two sides to your question. There's the, the interaction that you're having with Debian, and there's the interaction that you're having with your local source code management arrangements. Um, as regards your interactions with Debian, DGET will solve that problem for you, but you're in that anonymous fetch clone access box there, so that doesn't work for you right now, and I'm very sorry. Um, as regards your local source code management practices, um, if you have set up something that looks like the Debian archive already, and you're uploading things to it with dput and stuff like that, then um, in order to interact with that using dgit, you will need to also set up a git server, and you will need to teach dgit how to query your project's packages database. Now, there's a sort of pluggable modules architecture in dgit for this. Um, one of the reasons there's a pluggable modules architecture is that I kind of anticipated that you know, this would be necessary and derivatives would want to use it this way. Um, and the other is that I have flailed around terribly trying to get some kind of working access to the FTP master database, the current implementation is the third <laughs> set of such code um, after the first two attempts were found to produce wrong answers. Um, so I do know that that switchable stuff works. It's, you know, obviously the configuration and stuff of that gets a bit intricate, but in principle, um, the design does not exclude you using dgit to fetch from or upload to another distro, providing that other distro has some suitable infrastructure that you can speak a protocol to. Regarding the anonymous clone business, uh, is it possible for me to tell dgit to generate the history against an archive, against just the Debian apt archive or some other apt archive, and then check in that history and to a local Git repository, and having done so, if it did you exports this, can I then later reintegrate with Debian once you guys open up access? Right. At the moment, you can't use dgit to talk to the Debian archive unless you're a Debian developer. So the very first step that you okay. described there doesn't work. Even if I'm okay with it being out of sync? So I, I, even if you're okay with so it being... So you, you have no pluggable architect, you have no implementation of this pluggable backend that just fetches things from the mirrors? Uh... No, I don't. Um, you could probably switch over to the. There's one that uses R Madison, which okay. is probably mostly okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I switched away from it because it broke a lot. Um, you could probably switch back to that, and then you get mostly right answers, I guess. That's. I mean, right now um, we're writing up get source, so that's right. fine. There's another problem, which is that uh, dgit needs to test whether the git repository already exists on Allium. Um, and that can't be done with the standard Git server because the standard Git server thinks that you want to hide the existence or non-existence of Git repositories and gives the same error message for this repository doesn't exist and you lack permissions. Uh, but if you have an Alioth account, you can get around that. So an Alioth account is pretty easy to come by. Sure. Um, so I, I guess hurry before I move it off Alioth because when I've moved it off Alioth, you have to update your dgit to a new version that speaks some other protocol to my git server to find this piece of information. All right, sounds good. Thanks.
Any more questions? Joey here? You keep your hand up for the mic runner. Thank you. Um, so I guess my question is, D gets around now for about a year. I think about five or six people have used it to upload to the archive and they've uploaded maybe 50 packages or something like that. Right. Um, and it's maybe a question to the audience, but also to you. Um, why haven't we had more users yet? And I have a follow up, but yeah. Right, so, um, so I think this problem is, so. You have a lot of DDs who, are, who could be DD right, users. Right, so um, another problem is that if you are currently using 3.0 Quilt and you want to continue exporting Quilt patches to people who are not using Git, no, they don't have to be using dgit because you can push your git branch somewhere else so that people who aren't using dgit can still, you know, clone your stuff and send you patches and what have you. Uh, but if you want to continue exporting your patches as Quilt, then you, you've got a bit of a battle on your hands. You've got a kind of like warring git workflow tools and it, it doesn't work very well. Um, and over the last few years, since Quilt 3.0 came in, a lot of people have decided they really like it. Um, and since DGIT doesn't work with it very well, I think that's, the, that's probably one of the biggest hurdles. If your package is currently in, if your package is currently native, or if it's in 1.0, um, then these problems are completely irrelevant to you, and, I can, and, and if you like using Git, I can see no reason why you wouldn't use DGIT. So, I guess as a follow-up to that, I should say that two other you listed two ways that it's useful. Uh, two other ways that I found it useful is one, I sometimes just want to get repository with a package, and I don't really care about cooperating with the Debian developer because I'm just doing my own development, and then I'll probably send them a patch or something, and I can just dgit clone anything, and it works. Um, of course, I often don't push it when that's the case. And um, secondly. Um, sometimes I'm working with a package and they're in some insane version control system set up that I don't feel like dealing with even though I know what it is and say I'm backporting it to Wheezy or something and I would like to, you know, I don't feel like trying to figure out how to set up a branch in darks for a Haskell package that I'm backporting to Wheezy so I just de-git it, make my mods and push and, you know, that works for me too. Um, but I am kind of curious what the you know, why everybody else in the room hasn't tried it. Maybe they have. I'd be curious to know these things. Right. I, I, I can't really answer that question. Um, I don't use dget anymore, right? Yeah. Why would you use dget when you've got dget? You can use dget. It does just like the dget does, only you get a git tree. <laughs> and then you can work on it in git. And um, we all spend much more time reading packages than we do writing them. So if you look at the archive and look at the, you know, the proportion of source packages that have dgit fields, that corresponds to people who've done uploads of dgit, and you, all the people who have just gone and looked at some package and used it to prepare a patch are invisible. Um, maybe part of the answer is that we all spend, those of us who like good quality version control systems, spend more time working on our own packages in them rather than other people's packages that aren't yet set up with them. <coughs> or perhaps uh, there is less need to work on uh, native packages than there is to work on 3.0 quilts type packages maybe. Um, I can imagine theories like that skewing things a bit. Uh, so I think Steve is next. Uh, I, I can just tell you really quick I don't use it because I didn't even know it was usable. So, it's just been usable for quite a while. Well, some of us are old and tired of moving from one VCS system to the other, and so have limited amounts of time to invest in them. Um, half facetious as a comment, but in, you know the reality is, I did follow with one eye the the DGIT discussions um, last DevConf, and I'm happy to see the direction you've taken with it, and I'm looking forward to using it. But in terms of things that I need to see before I'm willing to adopt it. Um, you know, one is the 3.0 the quilt, uh, most of the packages that I have today. Because 1.0 only works if you've got tar.gz, um, and I've got a lot of packages which are not native, 3.0 quilt is the format, and so if it's going to interact badly with that, I mean, even 
if you're saying you would not recommend it for somebody who maintains their packages in Git because the f the output for 3.0 Quilt is so bad, even if I'm not looking at it myself, then, and I'm not sure if that is what you're saying, but... Right, so if you're maintaining your packages in Git at the moment, then either you are using some kind of one of the existing Git patch manager plumbing tool things, of which there are, yeah, people keep mentioning new ones to me. Uh, I think <laughs> at least four, I think there's about, I think I've been told about, uh, of about six, but I couldn't enumerate them. Um, either you're using one of those to somehow generate a thing that looks like a Quilt 3.0 package out of your Git history or manipulate it with Git, or your Quilt package is, well, you know, you might be using 3.0 single Debian patch or something like that, um, where the thing that you get in the DSC in the source package is not a rich history at all, and all of the history management is done in Git. And if you're in that latter camp, um, and your Git tree is sort of vaguely sane, then DGit is already perfectly good for you. If you're using one of these Git patch manager things to gateway between 3.0 Quilt and Git, then this is the thing that's, that's, that's biggest on my radar in terms of, of making that work well. Um, and I'm, I'm actually hoping that I'll get, like, have useful conversations with people about what the data format should be, because I think the data model is the, the key thing that I don't really understand. So then the other thing, um, as a, as a, both as a maintainer and as an NMUer, I care about having a I care about having the rich history that comes with having a package in a, in a VCS as opposed to just having um, upload level granularity. Um, and I understand that where things are today is that if you have that rich history and you are using it for your own package that you can merge things in. Um, but then the history looks like you have this, this one point where you've merged everything together and there's no stitching to together of the previous history on account of the fact that DGIT requires the the history to be fast forward from what it's already done. So because DGIT has already imported, um, to, to merge in the rich history, that's a one-time merge, and so you can't really use the DGIT tags to traverse in any meaningful way the history of past commits to try to look at where in the history something changed in a way that's relevant from like the package version. No, I don't understand your question. Um, so if you have a package that you have that you used to maintain some other way and you now maintain it in DGIT, then the there will be one little stub thing in the in in your ongoing history, which was the part where you told DGIT that your history is actually better than its history, and to just ignore the fact that the you know just to say make this a fast forward from that and your ongoing history will contain all of your actual history. Which, which means that, so if I suppose and I have all a package of your which is not... And all of your everything can be just the same as it was before. But suppose I have a package which isn't in Git today. Uh, and if I... it isn't in Git today, then um, if, you want to, if you want to have a rich Git history that shows you the history of the package, and you've got the package in some other VCS, then uh, what you should do is you should convert it using some repo conversion tool from SCCS to Git, and then <laughs> and then you can do Git merge dash s hours the dgit branch, and now you can push that. Makes sense, but sounds like a lot of work, and I haven't gotten around to doing it for all the packages I care about. Right, that's a perfectly good answer. Um, I think at the back there, and then here. And then Lucas. Uh, hi. Uh, for a lot, a lot of, to sort of respond to the question about why I'm not using DGIT yet, partly it's I didn't realize how very usable it is yet. Uh, partly it's because I spend a lot of time reviewing packages by non developers and non DMs who are mentees on mentors.demi.net where they throw DSCs to the wind. And uh, I guess my question is can I DGIT clone a non archive DSC? Is that an operation that makes sense? Um, y 
you can't at the moment. Um, as currently constituted, DGIT has baked into its configuration the location of the Git server to be used. But in principle, that information could be in the DSC. Uh, the reason I didn't put that information in the DSC to start with is because you're not really guaranteed that that... So a DSC can live beyond the... You know, when you mention a server name, that server name, you know, it might be down, it might be renamed, who knows what. Um, that would be not a, an implausible design change. It's a thing I've considered. Um, even using the VCS git URL might, you know, might work some of the time. Um, your person publishing the DSC will have to publish both the DSC and the git branch. And they will have to know the URL at which the git branch is available um, so that they can tell dgit, so that dgit could put it in the DSC and so that your version of dgit can find it. Mike, and it's not your. <laughs> I was going to say what Joey said, which is that DGIT could just uh, could disable half of its glorious functionality, which is kind of sad, and just you know import the silly thing. Uh, the other is yes, it, it, it makes more that. sense for mentors.dev.net, for example, to publish uh, some Git data or something that's totally within the realm of possibility, although it's slightly harder to require that for every DSC that people host upload to other places, like their personal home public HTMLs uh, that they want review on. Right. So um, the, the reason we've got these two, um, two storage locations that need to be kind of both accessed and synchronized um, is because of the other things that the archive is trying to do and the restrictions on what can and can't go in the archive. If what you're trying to do is actually just share source packages with somebody, then probably you will be better off just sharing the Git branch. That. Right. So if you're, the person sending you the code is already using Git, then um, 10 minutes, um, then having them package that source code up into a DSC and then you unpack it again is is not necessarily the best way of, of, of transporting that source code about. Git can do these kind of things somewhat better. Um, but we had some more uh, questions. Um, you did, weren't next. Did you... <coughs> you weren't next. Did you think about... Thomas, you were not the next question. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was actually a follow-up to Steve's question earlier about um, rebuilding the history. Have you looked into imp importing from Snapshot the Bianox that you could get the history since 2005? Um, I haven't looked at that myself. I know there's a tool already that can do this. Um, that would be great. Um, one of the reasons I haven't done it is because I want DGIT clone of some package to actually complete in a reasonable time. Um, Uh, we're out of time. That was a very short ten minutes. Oh, I see. Right. Uh, well, we're to stop. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.